I'm going to show you guys today how I do wood grains. Um, first, I prep my cup white. I just use white chalk paint. And then I use Tim Holtz. Um, this is espresso. Or no, I'm teak wood. Sorry. Butterscotch. And then espresso. I don't normally use all three. I just kind of like go with the flow. Um, I pick one and then I might go over the cup again. These are the brushes that I use. I mainly just use um, the big one. But sometimes I just switch back and forth between some and use whichever one feels right. Um, and just add a little bit to the brush. I also have a little cup of rubbing alcohol set next to me that I can dip my brush in periodically if I need. Um, I just start with putting a line down the middle of the cup and then using the brush to spread out that alcohol ink and you wanna pull it as much as you can to make the wood, well, the wood grain effect. And then you just keep going along the whole length of the cup to make your wood grains. Once you start accumulating lines after lines after lines, that's when you start getting the wood grain look. And so I dipped it in the cup just there to wet my brush a little bit with the alcohol to help spread out the ink that's already on my cup instead of just reapplying more ink. You can kind of see the lines start. It's kind of hard to see um, totally with the angle that I had the cup. And I'm sorry, I'm using a card table and my tripod was attached to it. So anytime I moved the table, it would shake. So I apologize for the shaky video. And so here I'm coming in with a smaller brush just to help um, spread out some little areas. These are just um, the really thick, like wiry bristle brushes. Um, I don't really think they're wiry, but they're just like the um, bristly, like horse hair, I don't know what material type brush. Um, they're not like a fine, nice acrylic brush, but they work the best for wood grain. You can use whichever brush you like. I know some people use makeup brushes, which are soft and fine. Um, and if those are the kind of brushes that work for you with your technique, then by all means, these ones are just the ones that work well for me. And, um, I haven't had any problems. So basically I'm just going over the whole cup and you can kind of see where now it's starting to really look like wood grain. The more you go over, the more it's going to take on that effect. Um, but you don't want to overwork it because then you're going to end up with really, really dark areas um, and maybe flood I don't want to use the word flood I don't I can't think of a better word to use so I guess like flooding the cup with your ink um and making it look too inky and unrealistic at that point so you kind of have to know when to stop when to stop finicking but you want to um push some of the ink sometimes to make those knots in the wood where it kind of mimics the grain of actual wood and it helps sometimes if you have wood nearby like I usually use I have wood floors so I'll use my wood floors as like inspiration I guess um, I'll look at the cup I'll look at the floor and I'm like okay I'm overworking this area a little bit too much and so then I'll move on to another section of the cup but you want those lines so the dark dark lines you don't want to wash out you want to keep them and you want variations just like normal wood. And just like normal wood, there's imperfections. So your cup doesn't have to be perfect. The more little lines and striations you have, the more realistic it looks.
So as you can see, there's those dark areas where they kind of make a dark like V in the grain of the wood. And that's the kind of look that I try to go for when I'm making my cups. And all that I'm doing to achieve that is just pushing the ink upwards to form those dark V's in the grain. And here I move the camera a little bit so I can get a better angle for you guys to see what I'm talking about or what I'm trying to show you. So I just pushed all that ink to make those lines. So now that I have the entire cup covered all the way around, I'm going to kind of go back over spots and kind of fuss with them a little bit to get them to look the way that I want. But like I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure you don't overwork cups or overwork the ink. So don't fuss with it too much. Um, but there's like some light areas and see where I just put the line. That's a little bit too light for me. I want it to match the flow of the rest of the cup. But like I said also, you want some variations. But there will be spots that you want to kind of mess with a little bit. To get them to your liking. Or just to help the overall aesthetic of the piece look a little bit better. It's really hard to make mistakes when you do wood grain. A lot of people, like myself, I was intimidated to even attempt a wood grain. Um, I had practiced on a cup for maybe 30 seconds and then was like, oh, geez, this is way too easy <laughs> and laughed at myself for being intimidated by it. Um, it's a really fun technique. It's a really easy technique for anybody to learn and achieve right off the bat. And then you have a really cool cool cup that people are like oh my gosh how did you get it to look like real wood and you're like mm, you know skills but <laughs> it really doesn't take a whole lot of skills but it is a very impressive look and so I enjoy doing them and uh, you can go back over any lines that you want but make sure you don't make it look too muddy too thick with ink then you kind of lose the effect but I have learned that it's a little bit hard to uh, not have it look like wood. So it's a pretty easy technique. So here I'm doing the bottom, which was really hard to um, show on the camera. But I'll, I, yeah, I'm trying to show you. The bottoms are just kind of whatever. Um, some people like to put um, like the little circle knots on the bottoms. I kind of just cover it just to get it covered. Um, there's no really good technique on how, to, especially if you have a smaller bottom, like this cup bottom is really tiny. So I'm basically just throwing a few lines on there to blend it in. And I apologize, I wasn't really good at trying to show the bottom while I was doing it. The most important part is like the edge edge. You see me tapping along that edge um, because 
if you, while you're working on the cup, um, like putting a decal on it or whatever, you could chip that edge real easily. So you want to make sure that you get a good coverage of the ink on the edge so there's no white showing through. But yeah, the bottom is just, you just throw some ink on there and spread it around. You can add more to push the ink around to make it look like a knot. So here I'm gonna start on a more blonde colored wood grain. And this is a 30 ounce hog. The last cup I did was a 22 ounce hog slim. And this uh, 30 ounce hog, I taped off the bottom. I normally do that for the modern curve versions. If they have like a cap on the bottom where there's that line, I almost always tape them off unless a customer requests for it to be not, cut, not taped off. I just like the way it looks better. Because a lot of the times, even through the epoxy, you can kind of see the line depending on what um, what design you're using on the cup. And I don't like that. I'd rather have it just taped off in the stainless steel show. So I'm, I started with butterscotch. And I'm just making the lines like I did before and just spreading them out. Now with the blonder cups, it's a little bit harder to achieve those dark, knotty lines. But um, you just do the same technique. You just kind of go over it and over it. You can go in with a darker color if you want, but if you're looking for a light blonde wood grain cup, then you have to be careful with how much darker ink you introduce in. You can also blend your inks beforehand. Um, and as you can see, there's some splatter on the cup at the top, and that's where I accidentally splattered some when I was making the last cup. So if you've got other cups nearby that aren't going to be wood grains, um, make sure they're moved further away so that you're not splattering them. At some point in making these, I realized that my big bristle brush, the one I'm using, uh, had red glitter in it. I must have accidentally used it to brush excess glitter off of a cup. And see there, I, I'm picking off glitter. And that's when I realized that there's glitter caked into that cup um, and it needs washed. So here I used my Cricut tool and I'm picking out red glitter from my cup. Things like that happen, you all know, as crafters with glitter, it is everywhere and unavoidable. I spent about a good couple minutes picking out this glitter, so we'll, uh, we'll skip ahead to where I'm not picking out glitter.
So this butterscotch is just so pretty. It makes the perfect blonde wood grain. And I don't believe I used any other color. I just used the butterscotch and went over it to make the areas darker to make those little v dark V's. And here is the blonde finished. I usually wait at least 24 hours or overnight before I add epoxy just so that it doesn't change the colors of the inks. And here are the finished ones.